and welcome back. Now this week I've got a bit of a problem because I was called into the uh, boss's office uh, earlier this week and he says, Ralph, that last project you made was really great, but there's a problem. You didn't put this LED in like you asked. Now that LED is in fact a white LED and our clients have requested it as part of their low voltage project that runs on 1.8 volts. Now, yeah, I know, everybody out there knows that you can't get an LED of any kind, I don't think, to run on 1.8 volts, which is why, of course, it wasn't put in. But they're insistent. So my boss says, what can we do? Well, Benny, I said, I call him Benny, first name terms, obviously, boss normally. Um, leave it with me and I'll see what I can come up with. I'm sure it can be done. And uh, left it at that. So how do we get an LED to light up? when it has a source, source voltage lower than what the LED requires in the first place. Ah, they said, I have an idea. All will be revealed after this message from our sponsor. I'd like to give a shout out to LCSC Electronics, China's leading electronics components distributor, who are in fact sponsoring this video. Our electronic components orders can be picked and shipped in just four hours, and you can pay by PayPal, various credit cards, American Express, or even wire transfer. And you don't even have to create an account if you'd prefer not to. Just check out as a guest on their easy to use website. If you do decide to create an account though, you can use their new feature of account prepaying. I think I might try that soon. Try out their website now. So the first thing to note is when does this LED actually light, uh, light up? Right, let me get to the, the camera onto the power supply and we'll have a go. Right, now you see that I've got 1.8 volts, uh, which is what we're working with, and the lowest to which that uh, microprocessor will run out, but that's what we're doing. Um, and that LED is not even flickering. So let's see when it does flicker. Let me just turn it up here. Right, 1.9, 2 volts, 2.1, surely, no, not 2.1 either. 2.1... I think normally you get an LED to light up that red one or something. Uh, two point, good lord, 2.3, 2.4. Right. Ah, there we are. Look, there's a glimmer there. You see, you can just about make out a glimmer there. 2.4, 2.5. Not exactly very bright, is it? Two point, ah, now 2.6. There you can definitely see something happening. 2.7, 2.8. You notice I haven't got a limiting resistor in here because at the moment no current's flowing, well there wasn't any current flowing, and on the meter here it still says less than one milliamp. So these LEDs are obviously good, good for torches I'd imagine, uh, but I'm not allowed to discuss the project obviously due to uh, non-disclosure agreements. Uh, well that's what uh, the boss says. Uh, so yeah, okay, 2.93 volts, lovely, but we're working with 1.8 and that LED extinguishes at, well, 2.4. So what are we going to do? Well, the circuit boards you see behind, the breadboards, um, I threw a few things together there. Uh, let's see what happens when I connect up to power to those. Right, so um, we've got 1.8 volts. The LED on this circuit is over this end here, that little thing. I've sort of bent it towards the camera. Let me connect up the negative. Oh, and there it goes, look. You can see that quite plainly flashing away. Now, it's the same LED, but not exactly the same. Physically, it's over, the other one's over here. But it's the same pack. Um, and that's flashing quite nicely at 1.8 volts. Hmm, how does that work then? Time for a bit of physics, I think. Now, there are no smoke and mirrors with this. I mean, we really do drive this LED. And as you can see from this board here, we're driving it through a 220 ohm resistor as well because obviously once we get enough voltage to drive this, we don't want it sucking all the current through it and, uh, well, potentially burning up. And, of course, we're going to drive this from a microcontroller, which is what the, the project's built on. Now, for this, then, we need two pins on that microcontroller. And the first thing we're going to do is put some charge into a capacitor. So let's do that first. So there's our capacitor which um, in this particular example, I'm using a 10 microfarad. Um, if you use bigger, well, we'll see what happens when you use bigger in a little while. So it's a 10 microfarad capacitor, and it's being charged by, by this diode here. Now, it's a Schottky diode, so the forward voltage drop is going to be quite low. And if we're starting off with 1.8 volts out of this uh, pin here from the microcontroller, we'll probably end up with about 1.5 charge across this capacitor. 
Hmm, how does that help us? Well, now we need to go to stage two. Stage two then consists of adding a further diode with the associated voltage drop admittedly, but what it's doing is preventing, of course, a short circuit here so that the charged capacitor can now be taken from here. But of course, that just doesn't seem to work, does it? Electrically or electronically. What we're going to do, though, as it's a microcontroller, we charge it up here initially, and then we're going to say, now flip those two pins over. So this now becomes low, effectively ground, and this one here becomes high. So 1.8 volts. The 1.8 volts on this capacitor that has now had its whole well world, if you like, turned upside down, is added to the voltage. So that this charge, well, we said 1.3 volts about, <clears throat> is added to the 1.8 that comes out here, giving you about 3.1 volts, pretty much. So by now simply connecting these pins and these pins, this will actually start to flash, as indeed you saw. And it still is flashing, of course. Brilliant. Can we just go through that again, perhaps, on the oscilloscope, and you'll see exactly where the charge applies and how the charge builds up on that capacitor. So remember, initially, this is high, this is low. So the voltage flows in this direction, down there, charges up the capacitor to about 1.3, 1.4 volts, something like that. Then we flip the polarity of these pins here. That goes low, this goes high. So this is now 1.8 volts, because that's what we're running on, and the pin will be pretty much 1.8. But this capacitor is already charged to 1.3-ish. We're protecting any backflow via this uh, diode here. And the voltage you see at these two pins here is the added voltage. 1.3 plus 1.8 suddenly gives you 3.1. Bingo, the LED is flashing. The sketch to do this, because it's a microcontroller, is literally a few lines long. But let's have a look at the um, oscilloscope and you'll see a lot more of what's happening on that particular, uh, well, the two pins really. So here's the output from the oscilloscope on these two um, pins on the microcontroller. So I've connected the positive oscilloscope probe there and the negative there, although of course this isn't negative because these two keep changing. As the oscilloscope shows, let me just talk you through that, the, um, the blue line running through the middle, uh, sort of here, that's the negative, uh, that's the zero line. So you can see that the pulse goes above zero, along for a bit, down, and then below zero, along for a bit, and up. And the reason why the pulse is shorter on the, on the bottom part of this is because the code tells it to do that, and I'll explain that when we look at the code, why we want to do that. So it's going positive for a bit, negative for an even shorter while, then positive, negative. So we're flipping those pins around charging up this capacitor via this diode and indeed this this process is called a diode pump right so as the voltage comes in here it pumps the voltage up on here but when the polarity flips on here so that this is now the positive and that the negative well the negative is already as we said is 1.3 so we're starting already from a 1.3, adding in our 1.8 from here, and this voltage we'd expect to see something like 3.1, something like that. So let me put the second channel on, and uh, where I'm going to put the probe on for that, I'll move this across, I'm going to put it on to here. Okay, we'll just see what comes out of here in comparison to there because that's the bit that's running through our diode. So now we see that the voltage across um, this point here and this point here, basically what the LED sees um, at the top of that display there, is something like 2.8 volts and 
peak to peak 3.2 we're not really worried about the peak to peak it's the average voltage we're on about so that's 2.8 volts more than enough to drive that led as we saw right at the very start of this video when it requires something like 2.4 just to make it glimmer but at 2.6 it was quite happy to glow not super bright but it was bright enough it certainly was an indicator now we can enhance this a little bit this this entire diagram because at the moment this is charging up obviously via a 10 microfarad capacitor now a 10 microfarad capacitor is not going to hold a huge amount of charge and the reason i chose a 10 microfarad was because for an smd circuit that's still small enough to fit on but of course you could use an electrolytic capacitor that's smd mounted aluminium can for example 47 microfarad possibly even 100. So what would actually happen if we change this 10 to 100? Let's look at the, um, the waveform again on that output. As you can see, it's moving about a little bit, but it starts off reasonably high and then sort of drops a little bit. Now, let me just put um, another capacitor on that circuit board and uh, we'll see what happens. Right, so there's a 10 microfarad in circuit at the moment, like, as we're watching that flash. And I've got to say, the flash is brighter in real life than what my video camera is capturing it at, for whatever reason, okay? But I've put the 100 microfarad capacitor in parallel with that 10, but it's not actually connected up until I join these two leads. So when I join these two leads, we'll see what happens. Now, even there, I think you can tell that it's brighter like that than like that yeah and yeah you can see that on the video camera and it's it's very noticeably brighter in real life I and mean, that's like whoa there's something really bright flashing there compared to there's just something flashing there now you don't get something for nothing in this world not in physics anyway so at the moment like that without this 100 in parallel that's taking well it says on my power supply less than one milliamp but it probably doesn't react quickly enough um, if I put them together though it says you might be taking up to one milliamp now one milliamp just coming on and then going off and then staying off so certainly no more than a milliamp there might be a fractional boost in current consumption as it charges up that capacitor however it does charge it up quite quickly so the next question then to be asked is all right that's a flashing led and it's quite bright but but why the pauses are the pauses there when the led is not lit to allow the capacitor to charge no the formula for charging capacitor the time equals the resistance of the circuit going into the capacitor times the capacitance so the resistance so we had a 1k resistor that would be 1000 times 0 0.0001 uh, so that would take about 0 0.1 seconds to charge up but we're not we haven't got a resistor have we we're connecting this capacitor directly to that circuit directly across the output pins via the diode admittedly so the diode probably has a little bit of forward resistance when it conducts so even if we said 10 ohms overall that capacitor charges up in something like one millisecond really quick isn't it so can we not increase the frequency of that flash to give a continuous light hmm interesting you asked let me drop in another chip with that program already uh, uploaded to it that doesn't really hang about and give a delay like that Right, there it is running now without that delay in. I'll put a little 250 millisecond delay in that loop in the sketch. And um, it's now running all the time. I noticed on the video, just looking at the camera here, that I can see a slight sort of flicker, but in real life, nothing. So it's probably down to the video recording equipment again. Um, that's, that's okay. Now, if I um, put the 100 capacitor in, you'd think it would make it quite a bit brighter, wouldn't you? But there's the 100 in out in out now in real life just looking past the camera here there's a small difference but nothing to shout about really quite frankly possibly because this time we really haven't allowed enough time for that 100 microfarad capacitor to charge up but whatever it just shows you can still create a fairly bright led 
using a 1.8 volt supply but an LED that requires, as we saw, at least 2.4 volts and ideally 2.5, 2.6 to actually show anything useful. So there we are. Let's have a look at the sketch. Right, the code is something you could literally knock up in about five minutes. And in fact, you could knock this whole circuit up in about five minutes. Two diodes, one capacitor, an LED with its 220 ohm resistor. I mean, it's just literally five minutes work. And the sketch, it's five minutes to write it from scratch. If you take my version, then it's going to be like 10 seconds, isn't it? So what do we do then? We have a setup, and I'm using pins 7 and 8, so D7, D8, effectively, because they just happen to be convenient on the bare chip. Um, setting them as output and then running charge mode. What does charge mode do? Well, that's up here and it sets one of them as low and one of them as high. OK, so it charges up that capacitor initially. Uh, then we go into the loop and it says now we discharge. Then we have a delay, this time a very short delay of only 10 milliseconds. Then we charge it up, which basically flips those again. So remember on this one here, the charge mode brings one low and one high and then the other one brings it high and then low that's all it's doing to the two pins so then we have an even shorter delay of five milliseconds to charge it up uh, so that's it so it charges small delay to allow it to charge discharges small delay to allow it to discharge and then round and round and round the circle it goes I mean it's just it's, it's so simple and yet by the laws of physics if you have a capacitor that's already charged and then you apply a further charge to it so that what was the negative ground plate is no longer ground it's already plus it pushes that charge up so the other charge on top is added to it additive charge now this charge uh, diode pump that we're using here um, it's sort of the basic foundations if you like for a voltage doubler that you can get from a, an AC transformer or a tripler or quadrupler even uh, but as I say you don't get anything for nothing Every time you, you double the voltage or charge something up like this, obviously the current takes a dip and there's only so much power you can have before the whole thing falls apart. But it does work. And if you've got a very low voltage project, it doesn't have to be 1.8. You might be running on 3.3 initially, but if it's a battery project, that battery is going to dip. And once you get below a critical point, you might find your LEDs don't work anymore. But this mechanism gives you a way to keep those LEDs alive and it uses far far less power doing it that way than if you just apply a standard DC input to that LED because it's only on for a certain amount of period but your eye doesn't detect that. Cool. Okay well I'm going to put all this up in the GitHub you can play about. As I say the whole thing start to finish would take anybody 15 minutes to put together and if you've got a scope you can have a look at those waveforms a bit better. It's quite tricky to do that while I'm filming here um, but if you got if you haven't got a scope you can put a multimeter on and just see how it leaps about the charge on that uh, capacitor it's an interesting little thing and i'll be using that in um, the project of course great love to hear your comments down below thumbs up if you think the video is worth it till the next video then thanks for watching i hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting there are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.